I'm Dr. Jeff Grognant and today we're going to talk about teeth and this is a very important health topic for both dogs and cats but today we're going to focus more on the canine version what happens in dogs so first thing off let's look at this diagram here I've got a picture of three teeth this one is I'm going to call the healthy tooth so what you have the blue is the tooth the red is the gum and it's just like if you were to lift the lip and, and look at your teeth you're going to see teeth and the gum going up to it and there's a tiny crevice it's called the sulcus S-U-L-C-U-S -S, right here and that's the small cavity between the gum and the tooth and that's where stuff can get caught in now when you go to the dentist uh, they're going to clean your teeth and they're going to go down in that sulcus and that's where they're pulling out any debris or any tartar that's built up so let's move and find out what tartar means. When we go to this next picture here, of this tooth, what we've got is we've got some tartar built up, that's the green, on the tooth itself. Now tartar comes from mineralization of plaque. Now plaque is the soft stuff that goes right on your tooth surface. And what happens there is you get bacteria, uh, you get food, and all kinds of other debris. And that just makes a, a very soft coating on the tooth. Over time, less than 24 hours, mineral gets into that and it actually mineralizes and forms a very hard surface on the tooth. That's the stuff that your dentist chips off your teeth with the equipment. Now in the case of dogs, that builds up right on the crown of the tooth, the part above the gum line. But the problem is this, the bottom of the tartar then creates a crevice between that and the gum and stuff goes down in the sulcus itself. It starts getting crammed down. And that's the bacteria and the food debris and such. So what happens is that it starts to separate the gum from the tooth. And so you end up with this enlarged sulcus going farther and farther down over time. And you still have gum attachment down here. And that's actually a very rigid attachment. It's called the periodontal ligament. But over time, you're going to move to what's happening in this picture. And this is where we're in big trouble. The tartar is building up and it's going farther because the gum is receding. That sulcus has separated completely and so the tartar has gone down. But it's still got a really deep recession here. And if you were to probe this, and just think of the difference. You probe this, you go to here. Here you go there. And in this one, it goes almost down to the bottom of the tooth. So what's happening is that you're losing all the, the tooth structure. And any time you get past about here, you can't clean that. It has already lost the tooth. And unless you were to clean that out and then get a brush in there every day or even twice a day, you're not going to save even this tooth. And by the time you get to here where the tooth is wobbly, we're in big trouble. Okay, so, so in these cases, we're trying to prevent going from healthy tooth to diseased tooth. And that way we can try and keep them in the body. I've got some pictures for you to look at. Now this very first picture, and uh, if you have a look at it now, shows very clean teeth. This is a very healthy mouth, the teeth are sparkling white, the gums are happy, and, well, I'll be honest with you, I just clean these teeth. So, unfortunately, you don't find them like this very often out in nature. You might find that in a young dog that's between 8 and 12 months old, large breed. Uh, but, in you know, most dogs, you don't find it looking like this at all. But anyway, this is clean. Let's go back to what it looked like before I cleaned them. So, here's, here's what you can really see. Here's the, what we call grade 2 tartar. It goes up to grade 4, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But grade 2 tartar, there's tartar formed right on the teeth. In this case, the gums were pretty good. So cleaning these teeth is really going to help this dog. And none of these teeth had to come out. So this is a healthy, healthy mouth. And if the owner can do some care, or we can do periodic cleanings, we can probably keep these teeth in this dog's mouth, hopefully for the lifetime. Now, moving on to this next one, what you see with this dog is that there's more disease in the mouth. This is what I would call grade 3 on my scale. 
and you're seeing more tartar build up, but the most important thing here is look at those gums. Those gums are red, and they're very irritated, they're swollen, and here we have infection going on. So these teeth really need some care. A couple of these teeth had to come out, and that is if you look at the ones on the far uh, right side, uh, those little guys, they had to come out because they're loose, they've lost their structure, there's nothing holding them in. And taking them out is going to help the dog. Now, let's move on to the last slide, and be careful with this one, it's really smelly. Well, if you could smell what's on your monitor, this would be really smelly. This is great for a tartar. And you can see there's probably more tartar there than there is tooth. There's pus build up right above the gum line. It is messy. And in this case, hey, yeah, we'll clean them, but you're going to find a lot of these teeth will probably need to be removed because the gum would have been uh, recessed way back and the tooth lost its structure. And obviously these teeth didn't get any care. Now, why do we need to do this? I just want to hit that for one second. When you look at this slide and see all that infection that's there, that infection is in the gums, it's, it's on, on the teeth for certainly, but it's on the gums and that infection is going into the body. If you were to get, even with cleaner teeth, if you were to put a little bit of gauze over your finger and just rub the teeth and then smell it, you can smell the infection. And that's a good way to figure it out sometimes if there's a problem or not. In this case, you don't need to put gauze on there. It is a mess. And so what happens is the bacteria from that tartar and just the pus and such that's there is continually getting into the bloodstream. What happens then is that those bacteria shower the liver and everywhere else. But quite often when I do blood tests on these dogs, the liver enzymes are up. And so that tells me the liver is struggling. We've got infection there. And so what we want to do is to get rid of that and the other things that uh, the bacteria can do is they can also cause damage to the kidneys and also the heart. And th those are the main things, but they just don't feel well. So when you clean these teeth and you get all that infection out of there and remove the abscessed teeth, these dogs feel great. A week later, they're just happy, happy, and they've got more energy, more life. And uh, quite often people will say, hey, I've got a new dog. Well, of course you do. So, Let's look at now a dental procedure where we had some really bad teeth. In this case, this is a young pug. And what's happening with this one is that pugs have teeth that are very uh, crowded. So if you think of teeth in your normal German Shepherd lab, that type of dog, you've got one tooth, you've got the next one, you've got the next one, they're all in a line. The problem with pugs and Boston Terriers and little guys like that is rather than being in line, there's not enough room. The nose, the nose is too short. So they end up turning and you'll get one tooth right beside the other. And you've got a crevice in there for stuff to get packed in. It's a mess. And so what happens with these guys, unfortunately, at a very young age, they can end up losing their teeth. Now in this case, you're going to see uh, now where it be probing the teeth. And I'm just using a probe. There's, there's not much force on this, but you can see that one tooth is rocking back and forth. And also, I'm probing the roots. I'm going way down here. So, is there much holding that in? No, not at all. The other side is, you're going to see stuff coming out between those two teeth. And it's hair and stuff. It's, it's messy. And that's the reason we're in this position in the first place. And that is, those teeth are crowded. Stuff is getting jammed in there. And it obviously, it wasn't brushed twice a day. And so, I can't blame the owner on this one, the access to it is almost impossible. So in this case, we're going to be removing this tooth. And you can see, we're rocking back and forth, and then finally, that one comes out. The next one, very similarly, sorry, very similarly. What's happening there is that I just have to use an instrument to go in and just lever it a bit. Once that first tooth comes out, what you can see is me removing that clod of hair and such. That's what's being the problem. That could have been there for a year, for all we know. And uh, you'll see more of that as time goes on here. I'm going to remove that second tooth next, 
and it's just going to take a little bit of what we call elevation. We use a tool just to get in and just lever the tooth up a little bit, but it's, it comes out pretty easily. But you can see all the guck around that tooth. It, it's a messy one. I finally ended up removing that last large tooth that you see there uh, and because I started to clean it and after a moment the probe went right underneath it telling me, hey, we've lost it, those roots are abscessed as well. And that one came out just as easily. So you can see, I mean this dog's only a few years old, already we've lost those teeth. And so unfortunately not a lot, a lot of care can really help this type of situation. These dogs are bred this way, which gets down to how can we prevent losing teeth. The thing that we're always telling people is, hey, if you can brush, you can really help out. Well, number one, you've got to start brushing when they're a puppy and get them used to having fingers in their mouths, having brushes in their mouth, and that way at least you can do this for their lifetime. Now, that type of exercise is really good in little dogs. In large dogs, we don't get that many problems. Uh, if they get dental disease, it's more due to fractured teeth or something like that. So what we want to do with those guys is just watch them and see who develops the problems. And what you're going to find is the little tiny dogs are the worst. For example, Yorkshire Terriers. For a lot of those guys have lost the majority of their teeth by the time they're about eight years old. Contrast that with an eight-year-old Shepherd, they usually haven't lost any teeth. Okay, so the brushing, the work, is really valuable in the little guys. Now the other side of the coin is you can just have bad teeth. And uh, not to condemn any dogs, but the problem is some of them just are going to develop the tartar, they're going to get the gum recession, they're going to have abscessed teeth, and even if you're brushing three times a day and flossing, some do, um, you're not going to prevent it all. And it's just like us. We brush our teeth a couple of times a day or more, and we still go to the dentist and have our teeth cleaned. Hmm, so it doesn't stop all of it. And so we do need to get the cleaning going. And some of these little guys should be cleaned every six months, uh, some of them once a year. It all depends on how they're looking. But as soon as you can detect an odor using that little bit of gauze on your finger, or you're seeing red or swollen gums, that's the time to get the teeth sorted out before we start getting gum recession and then subsequently tooth loss. I hope this has helped you with your dental care and certainly what we want to do is try to keep teeth as healthy as possible so we can keep them in the mouth, hopefully for a lifetime. So, I'm Dr. Jeff Grognant and uh, get busy and check your dog's teeth.